This could be legend in the making. Now, last night on American Idol, mm -hmm. which ever, it's, I, I, I kind of feel bad for the show. It's been trumped by all the Charlie Sheen. Yes, Talk. and uh, Muammar Gaddafi. And, right, and Muammar Gaddafi. <laughs> and the Tiger Blood and right. Drug Called Charlie Sheen and, you know. Winning. Winning. It's been trumped by winning. But it is on, and mm -hmm. the thing about this season, early on, we are seeing, I'm going to say hands down, some of the best talent so far out of ten seasons in this show. Oh, I would agree with that. I mean, when you turn it on, you still, even when we got down to the top 24, there were some train wrecks in there. And sure. you were like, oh, sure. I can't hit there aren't those anymore, really. I mean... No, no. There's, and there's been a couple standouts. Now, of course, uh, we gave you the Vegas odds on Wednesday. Or no, Tuesday, I'm sorry, right? Yesterday. Yesterday? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Vegas odds came out yesterday. And the girl that was favored to win was Lauren Elena. Loved her last night. Okay. And we'll play a clip of her singing here in just a little bit. This one, and I, I don't even know how you pronounce her name. Is it Pia or Paya? I think it's Pia. Pia or Pia. Pia. I don't know. P-I-A, Toscano. Can't remember, but she was great last night. She oh. got a standing ovation, first mm -hmm. one this season, and she did the Pretender song, I'll Stand By You. Listen to this. I would like to put money down on her. I would like to put money down on her. And the judges loved her. Randy even put her in, like, the category of the best of the best so far for American Idol. Yeah, they did. They loved her. I liked her, but I'm just so, I don't know. I've picked my favorite. I'm now cheering for my favorite. So everyone p pales in comparison to her. And you picked the odds-on favorite? I did. You did. Okay, so mm -hmm. you went without. I'm going to go with, this girl's got something special. There's something there. Okay. And I, we don't know yet if that was just her genre that she nailed. Right. But as far as I'm concerned, she can rival Kelly Clarkson. Wow. And, uh, I think she's better than Kelly Clarkson, just from that one song right there. Okay. Um, the pipes just, just blew. Now, this is the girl that you were, uh, were cheering for. Mm -hmm. And this is also the odds-on favorite in Vegas. This is uh, Lauren Elena. Listen to this one. She did a song by Reba McIntyre. Okay, all right, shout out, Jennifer. She was so awesome. It's hard to believe that she just turned 16. Yeah, I mean, for being such a young kid, man, I tell you what, she's got a career ahead of her as well. I, the thing about American Idol is that even if you don't watch it, this season is going to turn out some solid talent that you cannot deny. No, I fully agree. Now, let me just play one more for you here okay. real quick. And this one is, her name is, uh, is Rachel Zavita. Oh, watch her. Oh, okay, and she's got a jazzy tip to her. I and love I it. Dig it. Mm -hmm. And she didn't get great reviews from the judge panel. Uh, well, Randy, Randy is trying to be Simon, and Randy is not Simon. Randy, shut up. Yeah. Well, you know, regardless, and even from Stephen Tyler though, he didn't he didn't give her mm, great reviews either. But listen to her. She does a kind of a jazzy version of the Fiona Apple song "Criminal." Check this out. I loved your strut, I loved your swagger, I loved your moves. A little too Broadway for me. Not that that's a bad thing. Broadway could be your niche. I think that's the one thing that I've never sung. <laughs> Here's the difference. <laughs> yeah, I know. Huh. Here's the difference between Broadway and pop. Yeah. Broadway singers have talent. Yes. There's no doubt about that. So right. maybe she'll be the one to bring that Broadway style. Maybe. 
She didn't sing like she normally does. No. Last night was not her night. Because actually now hearing it without seeing her up there, she didn't have that smokiness to her voice that she normally has. I mean, she's right. normally got this like, great soulful voice, and I don't know that that was her song. I liked it. I liked it. And and like I said, this season we're going to see, I think, more talent, legitimate talent come out of the show than ever before. This is my prediction. Mm -hmm. If you don't watch American Idol, if you're just, you know, you're just over it, what what would it take to get you to watch it again? You know, we were talking about that yesterday, and something was brought up that was fantastic. Right. Great idea. Trapdoor. (laughs) Trapdoor. <laughs> so, because even you, you tuned in for your person, and you're like, hey, I'm out. Yeah, that's about it. I watched my person. I flipped back and forth because I knew we were going to talk about it t- today. Right. So I kept flipping. But honestly, if I didn't have to watch it, I probably, probably wouldn't, wouldn't watch it. So you say a trapdoor. Trapdoor. When they stink, zoop, right on down the trapdoor. And have them fall into like a bucket of slime or something. Something where we hear them. Maybe sharks with lasers on. Their lasers heads. on. <laughs> that's awesome. Two six zero nine eight seven zero. That's the number, or four one one nine eight seven. If you don't watch American Idol, and a lot of people don't, what would it take to get you to watch the show again or for the first time? Okay. Two six zero nine eight seven zero or four one one nine eight seven. You can text us there. Ninety eight seven. The peak. It's all about variety. Chris and Amy in the morning. We're down to the top twenty four now. Right. The twelve girls performed last night. There were a couple front runners, but still a lot of people just don't watch it anymore, and they're fed up, or just they never really got into it. And we asked, "What would make you watch? Right. What is it that they'd have to do to get you to tune in?" Mm-hmm. Kelly, go ahead. Make you like the Gong Show. Kind of almost like my trap door thing, don't you think? Okay, can, can I say this though? And I want to play the devil's advocate here. Here's the problem with that. Obviously, contestants sing week after week after week, right. um, and anybody who's ever performed knows that sometimes you have performances that kill it. I mean, you just slay it, and then sometimes your performances are just like, oh God, I barely made out of that one alive. So, you know, what if they have one bad performance and they get gonged out? Uh, we we would make it uh, like the Family Feud, and they get three strikes. Um, three strikes works. I like that. We might have a longevity thing, because if a whole bunch of people three strike out, yeah. they might have to end the season earlier than expected. Good riddance, then. Then, then who's going to advertise for AT&T, Coca-Cola, and Ford? You. Good idea. <laughs> Endorsements! <laughs> All right, what do we have for text messages? We asked the question, what would it take to get you to watch American Idol again, or for the first time? We have someone that said, they would have to, put your pinky to your mouth, pay me one million dollars. One million? Really? Come happen. on. That's not gonna uh, they said, I would watch if they had a contestant that got voted off and came back to judge one episode. That's from Karen and Gilbert. Someone said, honestly, it's overkill. A new idol every year, and the next season starts literally within weeks of the last Maybe if they spread it out to every other year and then spent the season between following the winner as they started their career. That's from, okay. That's from Darren. Thank you, Darren. Huh. I don't know. Okay. Well, you know, that makes sense. Maybe spread it out. It is a little too close. It really is. It's like the biggest loser. Like, they just mush it all together. Stop. And those are TV se- It's funny because whenever anybody goes, oh, how, how long has it been on? And they go, oh, eight seasons. They're like, yeah, eight years. And you're like, no, eight seasons. Uh, it doesn't work like years. It's a completely... Right. Here's the thing. We're such an entertainment-based culture. I almost wonder if we wouldn't eventually, like 200 years from now, Mm -hmm. switch our calendar over to TV seasons. Oh! Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, obviously people are becoming less and less religious as time goes on. Right. Right. The calendar's based around the birth of Christ. It is, even though... So, 200 years from now, it's all according to TV season. You sit there instead of going, oh, my gosh, it's spring. You go, oh, my gosh, it's the biggest loser season already. All right. There you go. 